Hey guys, welcome back. So today I am going to show you how I made my first wet hop IPA. I am so excited to try it. I have not transferred it yet, but what I'm gonna do is actually make 15 gallons of wort at the same time um, in the 20 gallon kettle. And then I'm gonna split it up into a 10 gallon batch, which I'm just gonna leave to be the normal wet hop IPA and then for five gallons, I'm gonna add grapefruit juice because I can't help myself and my neighbor just gave me a bunch. So check it out and I hope you like the video. All right, so what I'm gonna do since we're making 15 gallons is fill, well, I've already got about 14 and a half gallons in this guy and we're gonna sparge with this. Um, so I'm going to add six gallons into this kettle heated up to 168 degrees and sparge with it essentially we're going to mash at 152 degrees in here with our 31 pounds of grain um so let's get our grain going also just for kicks i'm going to throw in 10 grams of calcium chloride give it a little sweet vibe and just for kicks why not a camden tablet Okay, so for this grain bill, we're doing 27 pounds of two row or 12.2 kilograms, three pounds of white wheat, 1.36 kilograms, and one pound 12 ounces of caramel 10, which is 794 grams. So we're gonna max out our kettle, which is why we're gonna have to do the sparge. All right, so this is our caramel 10. I've already measured it. It's just whatever is in that bag. All right, more Northern Brewer malt I'm using today. So we're using the Rar Turo. And if you want to get some Northern Brewer malt for yourself, there's a link below. They're keeping me out of the poorhouse with all these large brews that I keep doing and somehow keep drinking all of. So thanks to them. Okay, so let's do our 27 pounds of Turo. three pounds of wheat, all right, that's all the grain. We are almost ready. All right, we are at mash temp. Well, strike temp. Mash temp's a little lower. All right, let's see if we can actually fit all this in here. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for 45 minutes and then sparge and then brew, I guess. All right, so now that we've got our 30 friggin' pounds of grain out, um, I'm going to sparge this with the water from here. There's about five gallons in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat up to boiling just so we can get that started. So here I have 8.65 ounces of Chinook. I'm gonna split this in two for my two Chinook editions. And as you can see, there are bugs in hops. So I'm definitely gonna wash these first. <laughs> um, I'm still going to harvest my Centennial and Cascade, and we'll see what we get. So here are my hop vines. The farthest left one was the Chinook that I already harvested. And we're gonna go for these two, which are Cascade and Centennial. Hopefully we can tell them apart, but I don't think it really makes a difference. 
Okay, so I am now super itchy and like hot and just feel generally gross, but I have two ounces of Cascade and four ounces of Centennial. So I'm gonna rework my um, recipe that I had just put down because I thought I was gonna have a lot more Centennial than Chinook. The Chinook really took off this year. I don't know, it was brand new hop. So the thing about wet hops is you have to use five times as many as you would um, like pellets or dry. Anyway, whatever. I'm just gonna use five times the amount of pellets that I'm gonna put in this recipe. If you guys don't have access to wet hops, you can obviously just use the recipe as I give it. Um, and if you wanna use wet hops, double it, or times by five. So I'm gonna put um, one ounce of Chinook, so that's gonna be about five ounces of Chinook at the boil. That gives us 15 IBU. I'm gonna do I have three ounces, so I'm gonna use half an ounce, I'm just gonna call it half an ounce of Chinook at the 30 minute mark. And that gives us 17 IBU total. And I'm actually just gonna add the rest of them at that 30 minute mark as well, make it easy on myself. So I'm gonna call it half an ounce of Centennial and a quarter ounce of Cascade. So our IBUs on this is 31. I like a low hopped IPA. Um, now that I have these all measured, I'm going to basically divide them out into where they're going and wash them because there's, oh, so many fucking grasshoppers. Grasshoppers are like the one bug that I cannot handle. I think it's because they hop and I'm just afraid of them like hopping on me. <laughs> anyway. All right, so sparge is done, pulled the screen. Um, definitely had a little bit of overflow because I was making a starter in the kitchen and forgot about it, but oh well, it's clean now. Um, our pre-boil gravity is 15 and a half bricks, which is 1.065 for our pre-boil. And what we wanted was 1.056. So we're 9.009 over. Um, our pre-boil volume was supposed to be 66 liters or 17 and a half gallons. I can tell. Um, we're right at 17, so we should be good. And this guy's still draining, so I'm gonna let him keep draining and I'm gonna turn my heat up. This is basically boiling now. Do you want treats? Do you smell treats? There you go. Now it's all in my hair. Okay, so for our hop additions, we're gonna do something a little weird. I'm basically going to put my hop additions within this screen that's from my old system and just kind of keep the pulley attached. So I'm gonna keep it just like that. And we are almost boiling. We'll at least be boiling here in two seconds. So I'm gonna go grab my hops and we can do our 60 minute addition. All right, so here is our five ounces of Chinook for our 60 minute addition. I did wash them. All right, we're, so we're gonna let those sit in there for half an hour and then add our other ones. So by using this screen, we're actually just kind of like letting the hops not be so squished that they can't release their lupulin. So once this like gets to be a rolling boil, um, it'll loosen all the crap that's in there. Stirring helps too. All right, see you guys in half an hour. Okay, so it's time for our second hop addition. And so this is two ounces of Cascade, four ounces of Centennial and three ounces of Chinook. Wah. So this is gonna go for another half hour and then we're gonna be done. And I've still gotta clean the fermenters this is going to go into, so I've got a long night ahead of me. It smells so good. Okay, so we're ready to chill. Um, I'm gonna turn on my pump, I've got my water going already. 
and I'm gonna lift this out of here. We've got just under 15 gallons in here. Might add some water, but to figure that out, I gotta take a refractometer reading. All right, so after what was in the hop screen, it's about 15 on the nose. And I'm just gonna let this chill forever. It's a lot of work. So for our final addition to this beer, we are actually going to add grapefruit zest. I guess I should tear that. So for our final addition to one of these beers, which is the five gallon one, we're adding grapefruit zest and grapefruit juice. This is basically how I do all my grapefruit IPAs. I just toss them in, in the dry hop phase, um, usually at Krausen. So let's just see how much we can fit in this little guy. Let's go for 50 grams. We're going to call that 50. And then we're going to use one quart, close to a thousand milliliters or one liter of grapefruit juice. So the thing about adding to a pressurized keg is you have to depressurize it. The nice thing about this is there's going to be a ton of CO2 in there, so I'm not even going to purge it after we add the grapefruit. One thing I forgot to mention is that I am using Safel 04. Somehow I just forgot to record that entire process, so bear with me. And as you can see, we are creating a lot of foam. I'm going to add the grapefruit rind or zest, whatever you want to call it, to this bag so that it doesn't clog my floating dip tube. Just dropping it right in there. All right, so I'm going to seal this guy back up. And we'll be repressurized here in a second. I don't know if you can tell, but it's already getting some pressure back. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you like it. I hope you guys get to make your own wet hop IPA. I made it through even though I'm irrationally afraid of grasshoppers and there's tons of them on these hops right here. I've got a Patreon going. You can subscribe. And I want to thank my newest Patreon member, Brian Wallace. Thanks so much for your support. I'll see you guys next time.